Hi, Mira. How are you today? I'm okay. How are you? I didn't want you to be alone, so I thought I'd pop in. And oh, say, you're hey. so sweet. I really want to celebrate your success. Thank you. That is so incredible. I know. It's amazing. And I, I so really tell me what's happened. You started the manifesting challenge, what? It was two months ago, right? Um, in even. August, well, no, in July. Yeah, in July. July 25, we started, which is the day I started this job that I have. Okay. Um, which is the one that gave me the, the 20,000 raise. Um, and then I saw another posting um, that's more in research. And you know how much I love research. And I'm two years out from the doctorate. So I was kind of like, I don't know, but they really want somebody that has my background, you know, my full background. And so I thought, well, if I don't apply, right, if I don't, if I don't put the opportunity out, right, it can't come back. If you don't and take action, nothing's going to happen. It's like Wayne Gretzky said, right? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this. Um, not really expecting much to come of it, but it is at one of my alma maters. Um, and, and so there is, you know, there is that. And so I put together my cover letter and, you know, and you know how I am, like everything I do is just genuinely like, here's what, here's, here I am. Um, which is very hard for me because I learned very young, like many people do, especially I think many women that being myself is a bad idea. Um, so it's, it's very hard for me to do that, but I was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to put this together. And so I sent everything over, um, put a, put my research advisor, my program chair, and one of my classmates as my professional references, because I haven't been in research in a while. So I was kind of like, well, okay, what am I going to do for my references? Because I always like my references to kind of tailor to what, what the okay. people are so, for. Okay, good. So a um, couple days after that, I think it was, I don't know, it was very quickly, like within 48 hours of having applied for this role. Unbelievable. The, the hiring manager sends me an email and keep in mind that like when I started in 2020, I was making about 83,000 a year, roughly 83,000. Um, I started 2022 making 91,000 and now I'm at 110. And so, so she says, hiring manager sends me this email and she says, well, the estimated budget for this annual salary for this role is 140,000 a year, depending on experience and qualifications. Is that acceptable to you? And I thought, well, this is really interesting. I just put this application in and they're already asking me about salary. But I was like, yeah, I would take 140,000 a year. I mean, cause you know, even at 120, I wouldn't be losing anything, right? And even at hundred, I'd only be losing a little bit. Not that I want to put that out there, but I was like, okay, you know, 140 would be like amazing. That would almost double my salary from, like I said, from when I started. So I was like, oh, okay. And so I said, yes, you know, that would be acceptable to me. Please keep moving things forward. And I figured, like I said, I'm two years out from this doctorate. So, you know, I figured there's going to be people who have a lot more experience than me. Um, but she sent me an email yesterday and she said, I'd like so to- So I just want to interject. That was a little bit of negative self-talk. There's always yes, going to be was. somebody, there's always going to be somebody better than me, right? Yes, so it's a competition, right. it's negative self-talk and it's bullshit. You know, it's, it doesn't so, matter. So listen to this, right, right. So, so this is all the stuff that goes on for me. Cause like I said, right. Right, you know, right. Okay. So, so yesterday she sends me an email, the hiring manager sends me an email and she says, um, I would like to invite you to meet with the, um, search committee Monday at two o'clock central time. Does that work for you? And I was like, I think I'm going to get this job and I think it's going to be amazing. And of course I'll meet with them. You know, so um, so the reason I tell you though about this negative self-talk thing, right, is we, I think that we tend to do this with our inner critic, and it's it's very interesting to see now that I've been working with you for I don't even know how long. It's about a year, year and a half. It'll still it'll still pop up. Yes, but it doesn't really it doesn't really have the same 
power, well, I guess, for lack of a better. Yeah, sabotage or hook or or ball and chain. I mean, I still have negative self-talk. Like it's not the same effect, you know, like the right. Well, you're you're able to take action in spite of it. You're going, hello, I hear you, but I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm willing to take a risk. I'm willing to push forward. I'm willing to what do I have to lose? Exactly. Because like I said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, to, to quote Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, fantastic. So, I'm so um, excited. I don't know, uh, you know, when I'll hear after my uh, presentation and everything Monday, but I'll certainly keep you posted. And but so notice the feeling that you're having, how it's different than, let's say, a year ago when you were struggling to even find a job. And all the applies or positions that you were applying for were way below your credentials. Yeah, that was horrible. That that and that was before you completed your PhD, right? So it's like we all have these these aspects or these times in our life where we completely get deflated. You know, it's happened to me, and. Yeah. And, and only having been there and knowing it's not the truth and having someone reflect back and moving that unconscious energy, that disconnect, you're able to build into it and reconnect with a new set of beliefs. It's almost what? like you had to install new software because the old stuff was just complete sabotage. So that's how I think about it. It's, it's, pro it's old programming. And I think that we all run up against this. Um, but it's very interesting too that that it's not having that same effect because that whole period of time that I was doing my doctorate, that whole 2017, really to 2020, was very difficult in my job search. Um, and just it, it was it was just a very crap time, if I can say that when we're recorded. Like it was not fun. Well well, and I want to say, you know, when we've got, that was your biggest priority at the time. Yes. So the energy and all your intention was focused on that. So it's not a surprise in retrospect that that other part was a struggle, but you had this pressure to perform. You had husband and family members pulling on you. So again, you weren't able to really put yourself first, right? And I think it might have helped the, the, alleviate the situation so that you could just focus. Okay, once I get this, then everything else will come into place. Is that? Yeah, and that's kind of how I felt is, you know, once once I can do A, right, everything else comes comes down. And I remember you had said to me, well, all your energy is going into this doctorate. And I was like, well, yeah, it takes a lot of time to do a doctorate. As you well know, there's a lot of of moving parts that you have to do and and you know, my research wasn't going the way I had wanted it to go. And that's a whole nother story for another time when we do academic things. But, you know, and then and then my least favorite professor says to me, oh, I'm coming to your presentation because after my defense, they invited me to come back and present. And so he goes, I'm coming to your presentation. And Amira, I never drank so much alcohol in my life as when I had this man in class. And I was like, oh, no, he's coming to my presentation. I was like, I, I'm like, this is horrible. He was very nice to me. Everything was OK. But I had worked up this whole thing. And it's trying to untangle those kind of, you know, webby things. And if you, if you can interrupt it early enough, right, it's a different story. Well, it's an unfortunate thing, but as humans, uh, you know, spiritual beings having this human experience, we think, oh, I can handle it, especially us girls. I mean, men hit this too, but women, I think, have it especially hard. Oh, I can push through this and, and feeling like um, you can't admit, you know, that you're struggling. And so we stay stuck. We stay and then we make up the story that we don't matter or that everybody else matters first. And we put ourselves last instead of putting ourselves first. And I think for you, that was the big switch is you, it, it was a slow turnaround, right? It takes us some time sometimes to understand that formula and, and really dedicating to yourself, taking well, sure, action, because I committing. think that's part of our childhood programming as, as young girls. You know, I was just in a discussion yesterday. Um, it's funny you bring this up. Uh, I was just in a discussion yesterday with a friend of mine where we were talking about how women stay in these toxic relationships. And so I had said to her, well, they stay in these toxic relationships, right? Because when we're little girls and the, and the boys are bullying, right? When the, when the little boy is sitting there dipping my hair in the paint, what does everybody say to me, right? It's because he likes you. 
and he's he's a boy he doesn't mean anything and then we learn from that right we learn from and people say this as if that doesn't carry on right into your adult woman life instead of instead of teaching us please don't do that that hurts my feelings (laughs) <laughs> Which is what I told to my, I told my kids, I was like, no, this is not right. You know, because I wanted a different yeah. story. Right. right. Um, but, but so when my friend and I, we were discussing this, it was very funny. And she goes, that's really true. She goes, I don't do that with my kids. And I said, I didn't do that with mine either because my father was a pastor. My mother's a therapist. And so I got to see very interesting things in the world, to put it mildly. And I was like, well, this is really stupid. Right. And so that programming then goes in. And it's like you said, it's a software and it's, and it's really almost like a, like a virus running in the background. Cause you don't necessarily know it's there, you know, and I'm calm. No, you I'm don't calm. know it's there. I don't think any of us, we keep working, we keep pushing harder. And then there's a lot of our dreams and goals that we all like, well, someday I'll write that book or someday I'll, I'll lose weight or, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll get to that relationship. Well, that's where thing. I was with my with my doctorate you know I always wanted to do a doctorate I don't know if I ever told you that but anyway I always wanted to do a doctorate and I had kind of convinced myself that you know eventually I would get there because at the time that I started the doctorate I still wasn't really working and I turned 40 and about the time I turned 40 I kind of sat there and I said you know what I'm going to be 43 in three years god willing you know whether I do this doctorate or not I think I'd rather be 43 with the doctorate so we're back to again, right? You you missed these shots. So I uh, I coached myself through that, and I you know looked at several programs, and then chose a program, applied, and you know now I sit here with the doctor in front of my name. So, um, but, the, but the thing is, you had created a deadline. You yeah. created a goal or an end point. If we don't do that for ourselves or any of the things, put a priority in what the things that we want to create, we just keep coasting. You know, we're, we're like the airplane, you know, in the air circling for landing. But when we have a vacation planned and you've got a bunch of things to get ready, you got to pack, you got to water the plants, you got to make sure the neighbors know all of your list of things that you do, you get everything done. And then your work and your business and God knows what. We have a gazillion things that line up when we want to go on vacation and we've got to get all that done. Same thing is with a goal. If we don't put a commitment or a priority or take action to it, we'll never, we'll never move towards it. Yes. And, and that was very terrifying, though, with the job search, because, you know, jobs don't always come out of the sky, especially in my field. Um, even though I'm in a good field, you know, it was really hard to find. Um, well, you made it hard. It, I made it hard, too. Yes. But just in general, it's but also- it, it once we get into alignment. Yeah. Once you get and, and maybe another word for that is clear, because you know, it's hard to com- conceptualize what does alignment mean? Well, we've been there when we're in a flow and everything's clicking, right? But when we really get honest with ourselves, what we really want, who we really are, and you're, you're um, getting focused on your skill set and what you want to do, like you took the first job just because, oh, I need a job, right? And it wasn't, it, it started grading on you right? And then it, it started to fall away. You got another offer. But again, you started attracting it because your energy field got stronger, drawing that thing to and you even, and even, feeling more confident. And even that, that other offer. So that came through a company. I've been getting their emails for years and I just kind of file them for the most part because they're usually not roles that I'm interested in for a lot of reasons. Um, And so this one particular email that came through, there were two of them. And so um, they have a thing on there where it's like, you know, tell me more about like, uh, you you know, reply to this email and pick the letter that you want to know more about. And so, you know, I sent her the two and one of them actually was a a research role, very similar to what I'm interviewing for on Monday. So it's very funny. Um, And the other one was this role that I, that I took. And, um, you know, she said to me, well, the other role, the research role, they, they really want someone to, to move up to Massachusetts. And for the salary they were offering, I really didn't want to do that um, because, you know, it's so expensive up there. And I thought my entire salary is going to go to all this other crap. So you had your reasons and you could say no. Yep. 
So I said to her, I said, yeah, I don't want to go down that road. I was like, thank you for giving me all that information. And then um, this one is very funny because like, I didn't need to leave, right? I wanted to leave, but nobody was going to push me out. It's not like I right. was going to be yeah. um, stuck for lack of a better term. Like I, I wasn't really stuck. So, you know, I had my interview, which was a very interesting interview, which I won't bore you with the details, but it was a very interesting interview. And then um, they got- what, you lear- what did you learn about yourself going into the interview? And how did you do it different? How did you, how did you step into that experience different? So I would say, especially with, uh, when I met with my direct boss. So the, the first interview was with my boss's boss, who's the one who ultimately was making the decisions. But I really sat back and decided that since I didn't need to leave, I could more interview them. And I was- So really- what were you, in your power? Yeah, I was very free to be able to say- You were grounded. You were clear. And and I w- I, and so they got, so the, the first person I interviewed with, he was like super excited about my public health background, which was very strange because this is not a public health role at all. And so it was very strange to me. And I even said to my recruiter, I said, this is very strange. I don't understand this. And she goes, oh, that's very interesting. And, uh, but I was still on board with it because I wanted to leave because as you were saying, there, there were issues that were grading on me. Um, mostly people that I didn't want to work with anymore. Well, but. yeah, and that's okay. We can't, we don't have to like everybody. Right. And when well, you're, when, when it's like, when there's an itch, you know, you take off the sweater, right? right, and right. So and you, right. Get to, you get to choose, you get to be in your power going, this isn't working anymore for whatever reasons. It's not making anybody wrong or right. Correct. So anyway, so I sat back and, um, went through that first interview and then there were a lot of politics with bringing me into this role because I beat out an internal candidate even so it was sort of a lot of stuff that I don't really so I I, I'm sorry to interrupt but what I'm seeing you say is one you had all these ideas in your head and you were incorrect so was the recruiter with assumptions on what the guy was even looking for correct and so we make these perceptions and, and, and ideas in our head when we could be wrong. And this is, and this is exactly how this turns. So this is very funny. So then I go and I, and I have more of a meet and greet with the person who's my, my boss right now, my direct supervisor. And, you know, she's talking to me and she starts telling me, oh, we don't have anybody doing life science and we don't have anybody doing public health and all of this. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, Oh, that's why he was so excited. Like suddenly it started to dawn on me. So when I called the recruiter, she was so funny because she does a lot of work with them. And she says, nobody told me any of this. And I started laughing and I said, well, I'm telling you because this was so interesting to me because exactly, we kind of get this whole thing, you know, whether that's the the, the computer virus in the background sort of programming going or whatever. Right. It's, Well, we don't know what we don't know. And the thing of it is, is when you put yourself out there, there's plenty of people that might want what you have. You just haven't uncovered their need. Yeah. Congratulations. That's so fantastic. I'm more interested in what you did different, how you showed up. And um, like, if you could compare when you first got this job to this new job, I mean, I mean, just looking at you, I just see there wasn't an issue of scarcity. You didn't feel desperate. So you're like, oh, I'm sitting back. I'll see if this feels right. You know, I'm not in a big rush. I don't need to move. So it's almost like rich people get richer. Why? Because they're not, they don't have a, a charge or an energy on on the thing that they I, want so I bad, also right? Like I'm like, I'm waiting to, to really get through that onboarding ramp up to, uh, you know, when I, when I met with her, I said, you know, I think I'm going to block off two hours in the middle of the day to go back to Brazilian jiu-jitsu class, because when I got my promotion in my previous role, I, I had to give that up because there was too much going on. Um, and we can sit here and have conversations about what I created there, or what I didn't create there, but the end result was I had to give that up and I really wanted to go. You, you basically took yourself out of being number one. 
And so um, right, you, put, um, you flipped it, you put the job number one, then you second. Right. Because there was so much going on, I couldn't even breathe. It was very, which is why one of the reasons I was looking to leave. And as you said, it was grading because it's, it's grading. And so, um, so she had mentioned to me, oh, you should block off some time, uh, you know, in the day for yourself and all of this. And I said, well, yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, once I get into a set team schedule, I'm going to block off these two hours to go do this. And I mostly said it because I just wanted to see what she'd say. Because I don't usually say things like that to people in interviews, but I just really wanted to see what she would say. <laughs> and she goes, oh, you should absolutely do that. And I said, oh, well, by the way, how do you feel about growth and development for your, for your team? Because um, that was another problem I was having because I was working for somebody who was not in favor of that. And then who led me to believe that that was the organizational policy when that's not the organization policy, that was just her. And she would say, oh, I went and talked to, to the big boss and the big boss said, but then when I had to interact with the big boss because she retired, the big boss had a totally different view. And I was like, oh, this is all very interesting. Um, and I didn't like that either because I don't like the duplicitousness of that. You know, it really bothered me. So I said to her, well, how so, do you feel about So I'm sorry to just interrupt there. It, it, it was out of integrity with who you are and right. you were wanting to grow and you wanted to be in an environment that supports growth and leadership and yep. you were feeling pressured or thwarted or sabotaged so you couldn't grow further which basically you've outgrown it i've felt obstructed i used to go to meet with one of my colleagues who was at the agency level and i would just sit and i would just cry and i would go what am i supposed to do my supervisor's obstructing me i mean it was terrible it was terrible Terrible, yeah. terrible. Get leaf. That's what it was. So, it was telling you spirit was telling. So it's not just about, you know, spirits got a message for you. You had to have the confidence and say, I deserve something different and I deserve to have what I want. So I said um, to her, I said, you know, how do you feel about growth and development for your team? And she goes, well, she goes, I'm not exactly sure what your uh, growth path from this particular role is. I'd have to go look that up. She goes, but generally I support that. And I said, it's okay. I wasn't quizzing you. I just really wanted to know how you feel about it. You know, and she started laughing because um, I think she felt bad that she didn't have, you know, a concrete answer, but I wasn't looking for the concrete answer, right? I was just looking. Oh, that's for great. It looks like you relaxed her, made her feel. So then, um, I just told her a couple of weeks ago, I said, I want to grow up to be the her on the, on the life science side. And she said, oh, that's the goal. And I, it was, it's so nice because like I had another role prior to the one that I got that we were talking about in 2020. I had another role in 2019 where I was talking to one of the directors and I made the comment. I said, oh, you know, I want to grow up to be just like you. And the person that had hired me was like flipping out and just screaming at me that I wanted to be a director and I had been there a few weeks. And I'm like, if I can't give someone a compliment, because to me, I want to grow up to be just like you is a massive compliment. Oh God, and yeah. If yeah. I can't do that, I don't want to be somewhere. So I immediately left that and I had left that without anything to fall back on, which is partly what had created that whole problem, but I, I couldn't handle that environment. So, and then so again, getting honest with yourself and really, really acknowledging these things aren't working for me and having the courage to reach out for something else. I mean, I know they presented themselves to you and then you went, you got this little message. Well, go for it. Go for it, Rebecca. Why not? Yeah, but I, and that's the thing, right? They, they have to present themselves, but I think that they present themselves and what is it they say? The teacher will come when the student is ready. Right. Or well, when like we're that. open, your energy field is shifted so that you can receive. You can play bigger. There's more energy space for you to really shine and show up. You know, yeah. and really it's all about taking action, but there's a vibration. So yes, you didn't go out and stay up all night and search LinkedIn nonstop, right? Because you weren't desperate. You were in this comfort you know, I'm okay. I'm good. I got a promotion and that's rewarding and a pat in the back that you're doing a good job. It's validation. Something's working for you, right? Right. So all of that is what you literally sitting back in your queen's chair and more opportunities keep rolling in. <laughs> that's why we have, we have the mug. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, Look and at I that. Have, I was picking that up. <laughs> and I have 
I have my sign, but you can't really see it. It says the queen, the queen is not accepting an audience today. That's what my- Oh, that's says. funny. Yeah, you're, you're, you're losing your queenship here. You're going invisible. You're going into spirit with your green back. Your, uh, your what do you call it? The, the background. The virtual background. Yeah, virtual. So the, how fantastic. I'm just, that is just so exciting. Okay, so you don't have the job yet, but what a whole shift you've experienced. And because you've done it once, you're like, bring it on universe. Let's see what else I can do. And so you're stretching, you're stretching your comfort zone. So I remember a long time ago, you had this goal of 50,000 a month. I, I'm pretty sure you said 50,000 a month. I did. That was my goal. And so you're easing into it because it's, it's a stretch for all of us to go bigger and you can't quite believe it yet. There's part of your energy field that's not quite ready, but you're moving into it, which is fine. And it could be completely without necessarily an employment situation. There could be products or programs or who knows. Well, my original, the original 50,000 a month goal was out of an entrepreneurship thing that I had gone to where they were talking about what's your freedom number. And I thought, well, if I could make 50,000 a month, I wouldn't have to worry about anything because like that, that's a, not a ridiculous amount of money, but it's a significant amount of money. It would be really hard to like, you know, have to worry about anything. And that was back in I don't know. I, it was many, many years ago, like back before I was even making what I'm making now. And, um, and I thought, well, at that, you know, that would be, that would be perfect. And so um, that was the, here's the I thing. I, I'm sorry. To, the employment thing. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's almost like the, the goal was too big for you at that time to believe it. And so when we say believe, I'm talking about an energetic having, your ability to have that wasn't there yet. You could have, you know, 80,000 a year. Then you moved into 110. So look at that. There's a three thirty thousand increment with each shift that you're making. Yeah. I find that a number of fa that's fascinating. Okay. So maybe once you get to 140, you can create 190 or maybe, maybe can 200 or something like that. But there's something that's going on with your psyche, your energy field, your belief system, your thought patterns that's growing and expanding so you can step into that true 50 Well, and, and the funny part about this is when, when we started the manifesting challenge, right? I said to you, I think, I don't know, I said it somewhere. I said, you know, I don't really know what my one incredible thing is, but that's okay. I don't have to know what it is to manifest it. And I just decided that I was going to go all in on that. And I was just going to go all in on, I'm just going to manifest whatever my one incredible thing is, because I'm not going to sit here and kind of box things around. Like it felt too confining to me. And I was like, well, I don't have to know what the problem is to clear it. So I don't have to know what this thing is to bring it across. Um, so I've just kind of been letting that percolate right out there like you know bring me whatever this thing is um which has felt really weird because I'm also used to that whole right we go to these workshops and it's you know set a very concrete money goal and so you know okay my concrete money goal is 50,000 a month and blah blah right. blah and and so I've tried to do this a little differently right and just been like okay because those other things didn't work right and, you know, it's interesting that you're saying that because when I started it, I had three things and I waffled and I waffled with these three incredible things that I wanted. And then I went, well, I'm a super manifester. Let me have all three. <laughs> right. OK, because ultimately they will manifest. But where I started focusing on a relationship, then I started, you know, connect. I wasn't completely clear on what kind of relationship I wanted. And it kind of got messy until I said that's off the list for right now. And then focused on one thing. And, and when, when you really start taking action though, how are you showing up different, Rebecca? What are you doing different regardless of you not having focus on your one incredible thing? So like I started to tell you, right, I'm looking at these things differently. So even a year ago, looking at a directorship would have felt sort of ridiculous to me. Um, 
you know, I would have sat there and I'd have been like, well, I'll just finish this doctorate in 2020. And, you know, very often um, when you read those job descriptions or when you talk to people who are in those types of roles, they have very different and more experience. Um, it's that combination, you know, and, and so I'm just like, well, let me look. Do I think that sounds fun? Yeah, I think that sounds fun, you know. It's, um, it looks to me like you got out of your analyzer, which I talk about all the time and, and judging yourself or categorizing yourself. You just went, yeah, looks fine. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. And the other part of you is shitting bricks probably. <laughs> like, if I really look at this, oh my God, how much work am I creating for myself? I'm really trying to, to do that, but it's, you know, it's very hard because as you were saying, right, when we start shifting all sorts of other things happen too. And not all of those things are good things. And so, so you're well, right. There's that what if, what if it. it's not good or bad? What if they're just nudging you in another direction, but it be, presents another opportunity if, to make another change? Sure, but it doesn't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no question about that. You have to stop and you have to go, um, you know, Byron Katie and, um, you know, has the work by Byron Katie where, where she talks about, you know, is it true? Is it absolutely true? Right? Is it necessary? You know, who would you be without this and all that? And, you know, I have to stop myself sometimes and have to go through that and just go, okay, is this really bad? It feels bad, but is it really, you know, is that really what's showing up here? Um, and, and, you know, I have to be a little more um, intentional is not quite the right word, but it has the, the analysis piece has to be slightly different. You know, the analyzer still needs to show up, but it just needs to show up differently. Well, and, and that's where when we clear the energy off that other people's energy on it and your energy on it, it helps us to get more clear and to really, you know, refine it and just know. And it's really we, funny. we can just know without analyzing. And it's really funny too, because sometimes I don't have the words to articulate some of these things because I'm so used to analyzing. So I have a friend of mine who's like, you know, how are you? And I'm like, I don't even know how to express this, you know? And so then he'll ask me three questions and then he's like, oh, okay. I totally get where you're coming from. And it's like hilarious. He was like, how did you know to ask those three questions? Just, you know, cause I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, don't even, I, I can't even speak to you about it. Well, um, that's because you're in your head. You're not in your yeah. heart. Yeah. You know, and you're not in this, in this other zone. We're all very, very well trained. We're all very yeah. well trained to stay in our analyzer, that yeah. intellect. And um, the way things are shifting, you know, I really see the way we're manifesting is shifting on our planet. And, you know, there's still a lot of leaders out there teaching the old methods, you know, and goal setting and stuff. And I'm finding it doesn't necessarily work. There's no question we still have to take action. But the way we get to it might be completely different. Yeah, so now I'm trying to, I'm trying to make less assumptions. You know, it's like, okay, I want to do something that is fun and interesting to me that makes me feel fulfilled as a whole person. And then as people like to say these days, right, universe and go, you know, which I think is ridiculous, this and go trend. But you know, sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to work on that a little differently versus, as you said, right, the way they really teach that, because I couldn't make that other way work. And I had somebody I was working with who really um, kind of beat me up about it and, you know, made me feel very ashamed about, well, you know, why isn't this working? And, and it was right. very and honestly, I, that happened to me. I remember in the corporate world years ago, well, how many by when and setting your goals and, and projections. And most of them were just, they didn't even make sense. They didn't even, there was no process to it, but there again, why are you, why are we beaten up for not doing it their way? Right. And, and I don't even care anymore. Like that used to bother me, right? It used to bother me. Why can't I do it this way? Because I have a lot of, or I did, I'm not sure. Cause I don't really like everything's different now, but I had a lot of this disappointment programming, right? I was a disappointment as a daughter. I was a disappointment as a wife in my first marriage, you know, all of these sorts of disappointment, your grinding type of stuff. So it was really hard for me to deal with that right why are you beating me up for not doing it your way but then somewhere along the line you know I just kind of sat back and I was like well why does it have to be that way because 
you know, above my desk, you can kind of see him on my virtual background, you know, above my desk, I have a picture of, of uh, Joseph Lister performing surgery. And right behind my head is Louis Pasteur in his lab. And the reason I have these two men above my desk is because they were both almost laughed out of their field. Joseph Lister was the one who said, hey, if I wash my hands between surgery, my patients live. And, and of course, Pasteur, you know, and his theory of germ theory and all of this about the microbes and, and, and they were both almost laughed out of medicine, but here they are, right? Titans and we've learned so much from their work. And I have them above my desk to remind me of this, that sometimes I sit here but innovation is always met with some degree of skepticism and some degree of laughter. And that doesn't mean that it's incorrect. Right? But there again, when we're connected with ourselves and really know and yep. anchor that, and we have a new idea or a belief system, being able to be confident and express it. And if nobody follows us, still go forward. Like yep. I'm committed to being here every day, whether people show up or not. Why? Because I'm committed to mine. And at some level, unconsciously, everybody hopefully that's ready to take their step will step forward into the arena to manifest and put more focus towards what they want, right? And, and I think too, it's like, um, like I remember years ago when I had the chronic fatigue syndrome and all the mainstream medicine told me I, I'm ready to die, right? And I had to do things different. I had to go against the grain 30 years ahead. I was detoxing and doing colonics and antiparasitic and da, 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 da. It was against the grain. And just even today, doctors are still thinking that's And see, there you are, being listed. whack a doodle Oh, yep. yeah, I know. I was a rebel without a cause. <laughs> that's, that's, and, but that's why they're above my desk, because it, 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 yes. it helps to remind yes. me of that. Because yes. sometimes it's very lonely, right? When you're going against the grain, right. doing these things differently, when you're sitting there and you're going, well, what about this? What about that? Uh, in terms of what you're going to set for yourself. And so, so and, and a lot of times we're looking for approval or validation, right? And so it's almost like, yeah, we have to find our tribe where somebody else gets us. And thank God for the technology now and Zoom and that we can come together and, and, and confidently hold a vision that is contrary to what other people are speaking about. And so, and still being able to um, follow that inner, inner guidance system, developing that anchor so deeply. And you know, what's the first thing we talk about is grounding it. Own, there's a sense of ownership when we do that. There's a sense of being able to be firmly rooted, having the courage to take a next step. That's, that's where all of this is, is interwoven. Yep, and that's why they're above my desk to remind me of that that's when I start fantastic. to feel when I start yeah. to kind of sit there and I start to feel like I don't know about this. I can look above my desk and I can go look. These are two titans of science, right? Who really had to fight a battle. And As we're experiencing around us now. Yeah, right. And sometimes you got to fight the battle, right? And so then I just look up above my desk and I just go, okay. Um, and, 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 you know, it helps me to, to refocus that, um, because it is one of those things where, you know, I don't really have a very big tribe. And as, as I told you, my, one of my very best friends of 27 years just recently passed away. Yeah. I'm sorry um, for your loss. So it's, you know, one of those things where it's like, um, even less of my tribe, right. It's like, it's like I said to my Rebecca, husband, I just thought I'd be older. Take a breath. I, I'm so excited for you, and I know you're super excited, but losing your friend is a big deal. Yes, it is. You know, and I want to speak to that because there's a lot of loss right now, whether it's our career or a dear friend, uh, a loved one, um, it triggers something in us. And you're going to make me cry now. Um, you're not making me cry. It's just I'm feeling the emotion of it and the power behind it. And, you know, with time, we start, at least for me, I start connecting with them on, on another level. My, I don't, I've shared this story a few times. My, my dear, dear friend, JR, who was my webmaster, died in 2018. And man, he pissed me off by leaving. You know, we had a meeting plan, <laughs> you know, but it was a huge setback, a huge wave of depression that I, 
you know, I talk to dead people all the time, but I still felt it. There's like an energetic dynamic shift that occurs in, in, in our field that is profound. And I don't even know that the words that I'm saying really express it, but they start coming through in another way. And in some ways, us reclaiming our energy from these loved ones that have passed is actually empowering to you. When did she cross or he? She crossed on um, August 20th. And when did you get this offer? Um, for this role that I'm currently in, um, July, well, I got this offer uh, July 8th for this role. Because sometimes what happens is, and I notice this for myself, JR was such an incredible support for me. And he was such what I thought the be all end all for my website. But by him leaving and forcing me into a new direction actually opened up the floodgates for me. So in ways that I thought that I couldn't do without him, he was actually limiting me and I couldn't see it. Does that make I, any sense to you? I think that when we are here, me, you, all of us, right? We're all here to do things, some things. And it takes us a set amount of time to do those things. And it can become limiting. And when it's your time, it's your time, you know? And she has another friend who's like completely distraught. Um, and, I, and I said to her friend, I said, you know, I said, we don't know what the timetable is, right? I don't run the world. God runs the world. I don't run the world. I have to remind myself of that sometimes sometimes I think, well, he needs a little help, you know, but the reality is he doesn't need the help and I need to just back myself down. But the, the reality here is that, you know, when it's, when it's time, it's time. And it could be that they're limiting. It could be. No, I don't mean from an analytical perspective, they could have been the best support, but I'm speaking on an energetic level unbeknownst to us because we rely on them so much yep. is that energy interferes with your creative process and your next step. And so it's an interesting dynamic that I witness within a lot of people. So it actually frees up some space. Yes. To create new friends, but maybe different friends. Maybe there's a new level that you're ready to, to step into that is wanting to come in but you couldn't because you relied so heavily on something that was familiar does that make sense when, yeah and I think when they cross too you know they cross energetically and so they may be crossing to also be helpful on absolutely in a whole new way like JR is communicating me cheering me on in a whole different way yeah yeah, but, it but it, it, it's our human process that goes through this reconfiguration. It's almost like I've un unloaded my trash and all these files, these archives. So I freed up more space on my hard drive to create, get some new programs, create some new stuff. So it's fascinating. Yeah. And so, you know, I taking the that. time to connect with her is a good thing too. I think it can be very frightening to you because like, so we had some classmates that are part of a group that I need to stay away from energetically for my own self. And it, they started to rain. Instead of asking her parents what happened, they started to rain into my, my little space. And I had to figure out how to turn that off, which I eventually did, just took a little while. Um, and then it got way more interesting on that ener energetic level and then I was able to kind of feel that probably what you're talking about that on the on the different level connection yeah fantastic and like it'll get here but they're not here because yeah. when they leave they have some processing to do and then after that and I don't know everybody's different but it's almost like when there's yeah they'll reach out they'll connect in ways that you couldn't have imagined and it's wonderful well, here again, I really want to say thank you for popping in today and, and sharing your exciting news and hopefully will inspire other people that are feeling stuck or, or limiting themselves in some way because, you know, we're continually being stretched and prompt, prompted and yeah. Congratulations, Rebecca. Good job. Good, good on you for all the work and commitment you've, you've stretched into. I thank you and thank you for being here and um, 
hopefully I'll be able to be here more often. That's my intention with you. Great, great. Well, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a continual stretch, right? <laughs> Not being like committed you. being committed to yourself is number one that's fantastic <laughs> yeah so have a great day sweetie i'm gonna uh let you go create more of your awesomeness yeah i see i've got a bunch of emails here that i gotta get okay. to so i'll see you later okay, love okay take care all the best Bye.